welcome to part seven of our reading of the book of jubilees in this part seven we are going to be going through chapters 21 through 24. if this is your first time on this channel first of all welcome we're very happy to have you here however i would suggest starting with part one which obviously begins with chapter one of the book of jubilees if you are new to this channel every week on wednesdays we recap the text that we spoke about on the dark outpost tv the day before with David Zublick. Every Tuesday on the darkoutposttv.com, we are going through chapter by chapter, book by book, all of the banned or heretical books from the Bible. And again, if you are new to this channel or if you are not new to this channel and you just missed some of the prior books that we've spoken about through our breakdown of all these missing books, I will have a link in the description box below of our playlist from The Dark Outpost, which includes all of the past episodes. As always on The Dark Outpost, it is David and myself going through this together, so we do have more of a conversation around this text, whereas when I recap on Wednesdays, it's really just me reading it to you and making some commentary on my own. If you're interested in hearing the conversation around these texts, then please join us on The Dark Outpost on Tuesdays. As of now, we are going live at 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and so if you are on the platform, then you will be able to call into the show if you want to discuss something that we've read or if you have a question in that moment. Otherwise, you can catch the replay of that live episode in the evenings on the Dark Outpost TV or on BitChute and Rumble, and then of course, as always, again on Wednesdays on Esoteric Atlanta. I also want to give a quick thank you once more to all of my patrons. Without you, this would not be possible. Your money goes to helping us pay for equipment, lights, and even sometimes books when we have to buy books to further our study into these French topics. Because of you guys, I actually bought the book of Jubilee that I'm using right now to read from. So thank you so much again for your support. If you would like to join our Patreon community, there is also a link down in the description box below. All right, let's get started with the book of Jubilee, part seven, chapter 21. So this is gonna be going over Abraham's death. This chapter is entitled, Abraham's Last Words to Isaac. And in the sixth year of the seventh week of this jubilee, Abraham called Isaac his son and commanded him, saying, I am old, and know not the day of my death, and in full of my days. It's funny, my grandfather used to say stuff like that. My grandfather, my father's father, who had a near-death experience in his 40s, where he met Jesus and walked into a light and, and all that good stuff. And then he actually ended up passing away for the final time in his 80s. But when he was getting close to his death, he kept saying, I think I'm going to go soon. I think I'm going to go soon. So it's almost like when you get that old, you're kind of ready, right, to leave this life behind and move on to the next life. Verse 2, And behold, I am 175 years old, and throughout all the days of my life I have remembered the Lord and sought with all my heart to do His will and to walk uprightly in all His ways. My soul hath hated idols, and I have despised those that serve them, and I have given my heart and spirit that I might observe to do the will of Him who created me. For he is the living God, and he is holy and faithful, and he is righteous beyond all, and there is with him no accepting of men's persons and no accepting of gifts, for God is righteous, and executeth judgment on all those who transgress his commandments and despise his covenant. And do thou, my son, observe his commandments and his ordinance and his judgments, and walk not after the abominations, and after the graven images, and after all the molten images. And eat not blood at all of any animals or cattle, or any bird which flieth in the heaven. So again, the topic of blood has been a huge topic in the book of Jubilees. And as I've said before, if I had done this reading 10 years ago, let's say, I probably would not have noticed that as much as it stands out to me now. 
And I think it's because most of us know what the elite do with blood. We, are, we understand that now. And actually that, as our friend Taro by Janine calls it, the party drug that they use, the party wine that they use, we can't say the actual word of it on YouTube, that party wine is actually all over the Bible. The Bible talks about that actual party drug that involves blood throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament. And obviously it's a huge grave topic of concern here in the book of Jubilee. Verse 7. And if thou dost slay a victim as an acceptable peace offering, slay it and pour out its blood upon the altar and all the fat of the offering offer on the altar with fine flour and a meat offering mingled with oil and its drink offering other than altogether on the aisle of the burnt offering. It is a sweet savor before the Lord. And thou wilt offer the fat of the sacrifice of thanks offering on the fire which is upon the altar, and the fat which is on the belly, and all the fat on the inwards, and the two kidneys, and all the fat that is upon them, and upon the loins and the liver thou shalt remove together the kidneys. That's very graphic. And if you remember from our breakdown of the Book of the Holy Twelve, Jesus actually gets really upset about all these animal offerings that were happening in the temples around his life, and basically that was part of his message was to stop making these um, animal or living being sacrifices. And after all these for a sweet savor acceptable before the Lord with its meat offering and with its drink offering for a sweet savor, the bread of the offering unto the Lord. And eat its meat on the day and on the second day and let not the sun on the second day go down upon it till it is eaten and let nothing be left over for the third day for it is not acceptable for it is not approved and let it no longer be eaten. And all who eat thereof will bring sin upon themselves. For thus I have found it written in the books of my forefathers, and in the words of Enoch, and in the words of Noah. And on all thy oblations thou shalt strew salt, and let not the salt of the covenant be lacking in all thy, thy oblations before the Lord. And as regards to the wood of the sacrifice, beware lest thou bring other wood for the altar in addition to these. Cypress, defron, sag, pine, fir, cedar, savin, palm, oil, myrrh, laurel, and citron, juniper, and balsam. So very strict about the way the altar should be made and with what woods. Verse 13, And of these kinds of wood lay upon the altar under the sacrifice, such as have been tested as to their appearance, and do not lay thereon any splint or dark wood, but heart and clean without fault, a sound and a new growth, and do not lay thereon old wood, for its fragrance is gone, and there is no longer fragrance in it as before. Besides these kinds of wood, there is none other that thou shalt place on the altar, for the fragrance is dispersed, and the smell of its fragrance goeth up not into heaven. Observe this commandment, and do it, my son, that thou mayest be upright in all thy deeds. And at all times be clean in thy body, and wash thyself with water before thou approachest to offer on the altar. And wash thy hands and thy feet before thou drawest near the altar, and when thou art done sacrificing, wash again thy hands and thy feet. And let no blood appear upon you, nor upon your clothes. Be on thy guard, my son, against blood, and be on thy guard exceedingly, cover it with the dust. And do not eat any blood, for it is the soul. Eat no blood whatsoever. So again, your genetic coding is in your blood. We've talked extensively about different bloodlines on Esoteric Atlanta. I myself am an RH negative, and that is a very specific type of blood. There's definitely more to blood types than they've let us know about our origins as people. So it's interesting that this is a very strict commandment from the book of Jubilee not to eat any blood. And take no gifts for the blood of man, lest it be shed with impunity, without judgment. For it is the blood that is shed that causeth the earth to sin. And the earth cannot be cleansed from the blood of a man, save by the blood of him who shed it. And take no present or gift for the blood of man, blood for blood, that thou mayest be accepted before the Lord, the Most High God, for he is the defense of the good, and that thou mayest be preserved from all evil, and that he may save thee from every kind of death. I see, my son, that all the works of the children of men 
are sin and wickedness. And all their deeds are uncleanliness and an abomination and a pollution, and there is no righteousness with them. Beware, lest thou shouldest walk in their ways and tread in their path. And sin a sin unto death before the Most High God, else he will hide his face from thee and give thee back into the hands of thy transgression, and root thee out of the land, and thy seed likewise from under heaven, and thy name and thy seed will perish from the whole earth. Turn away from all their deeds and all their uncleanliness, and observe the ordinance of the Most High God, and do his will, and be upright in all things." And he will bless thee in all thy deeds, and will raise up from thee the plant of righteousness through all the earth, throughout all generations of the earth. And my name and thy name will not be forgotten under the heaven forever. Go, my son, in peace. May the Most High God, my God, and thy God strengthen thee to do his will. And may he bless all thy seed and the residue of thy seed for the generations forever, with all righteousness, blessings, that thou mayest be a blessing on all the earth. And he went out from him rejoicing. So this brings us to chapter 22. Isaac, Ishmael, and Jacob join in festival with Abraham for the last time, Abraham's prayer. So again, remember, Isaac and Ishmael are half-brothers. Isaac is the son of Sarah. Sarah has already passed away. Ishmael is the son of Hagar. Hagar herself has also already passed away. Now again, our Muslim brothers and sisters follow Ishmael as Abraham's firstborn son and what they believe is the promise of the covenant, whereas Christians and Jewish people follow Isaac, the son of Sarah, as being the firstborn son, that is the son of the covenant. And it's going to come through from Isaac to Jacob. Esau is Jacob's twin. Now we learned last week that Isaac preferred Esau to Jacob and Rebekah, Isaac's wife, who was also his first cousin once removed, prefers Jacob, as did Abraham. Jacob is Abraham's grandson. So here we go, chapter 22. And it came to pass in the first week in the 44th Jubilee in the second year, that is the year in which Abraham died, that Isaac and Ishmael came from the well of the oath to celebrate the feast of the weeks. That is the feast of the first fruits of the harvest to Abraham their father, and Abraham rejoiced because his two sons had come. For Isaac had many possessions in Beersheba, and Isaac was wont to go and see his possessions and return to his father. And in those days Ishmael came to see his father, and they both came together. And Isaac offered a sacrifice for a burnt offering and presented it on the altar of his father, which he had made in Hebron. And he offered a thank offering and made a feast of joy before Ishmael, his brother. And Rebekah made new cakes from a new grain. Again, Rebekah is Isaac's wife and she would be Ishmael's sister-in-law. So Rebekah made a new cake from the new grain and gave them to Jacob, her son, to take them to Abraham, his father, from the first fruits of the land that he might eat and bless the creator of all things before he died. And Isaac, too, sent by the hand of Jacob to Abraham a best thank offering that he might eat and drink. And he ate, he drank, and he blessed the Most High God, who hath created heaven and earth, who hath made all the fat things of the earth, and given them to the children of men, that they might eat and drink and bless their Creator. And now I give thanks unto thee, my God, because thou hast cost me to see this day. Behold, I am one hundred three score and fifteen years, an old man and full of days, and all my days have been unto me peace. The sword of adversary hath not overcome me in all that thou hast given me and my children all the days of my life until this day. My God, may thy mercy and thy peace be upon thy servant and upon the seeds of his sons, that they may be to thee a chosen nation and an inheritance from amongst all the nations of the earth from henceforth unto all the days of the generations of the earth unto all the ages. And he called Jacob and he said, My son Jacob, may God of all bless thee and strengthen thee to do righteousness and his will before him and he may choose thee and thy seed and that ye may become a people for his inheritance 
and according to his will always. And do thou, my son Jacob, draw near and kiss me. And he drew near and kissed him, and he said, Blessed be my son Jacob, so Jacob his grandson, and all the sons of God most high unto all the ages. May God give unto thee a seed of righteousness. And some of thy sons may he sanctify in the midst of the whole earth. Many nations serve thee, and all the nations bow themselves before thy seed. Be strong in the presence of men and exercise authority over all the seed of Seth. Because remember, Seth was where the line of humanity came from because Cain killed Abel. Of course, Cain also had some descendants, but they were wiped out with the flood. And so it was just Seth's descendants through Noah that lived on the earth. So technically, if you take this as a factual creation story, we are all descendants of Seth. Then why thy ways and the ways of thy son will be justified so that they shall become a holy nation. May the most high God give thee all the blessings wherewith he hath blessed me and wherewith he blessed Noah and Adam. May they rest on the sacred head of thy seed from generation to generation forever. And may he cleanse from thee all unrighteousness and impurity, that thou mayest be forgiven all thy transgressions and thy sins of ignorance. And may he strengthen thee and bless thee, and mayest thou inherit the whole earth. And may he renew his covenant with thee, that thou mayest be to him a nation for his inheritance for all the ages, and that he may be to thee and to thy son a God in truth and righteousness throughout the days of the earth. And do thou, my son Jacob, remember my words, and observe the commandments of Abraham thy father. Separate thyself from the nations, and eat not with them, and do not according to their works, and become not their associate, for their works are unclean. And all their ways are pollution and abomination and uncleanliness. They offer their sacrifices to the dead, and they worship evil spirits, and they eat over the graves, and all their works are vanity and nothingness. And they have no heart to understand, and their eyes do not see what their works are, and how they Air in saying to a piece of wood, Thou art my God, and to a stone, Thou art my Lord, and Thou art my Deliverer. And they have no heart. And as for thee, my son Jacob, may the Most High God help thee, and the God of heaven bless thee, and remove thee from their uncleanliness from all of their error. So again, remember earlier in this book, Abraham, before he was Abraham, when he was Abram, he was very upset by the fact that his own father worshipped actual wooden idols that had been made by man. And he always just worshipped the one God. And actually, as a younger person, Abram, as he was called then Abram, not Abraham, burned down the temple of these false idols that his village had. Verse 20, Be thou ware, my son Jacob, for taking a wife from any seed of the daughters of Canaan, for all his seed is to be rooted out of the earth. Again, Canaan is the Canaanites. It's our royal families today, the Phoenicians. For owing to the transgressions of Ham, Canaan erred, and all of his seed will be destroyed from off the earth, and all the residue thereof, and none springing from him will be saved on the day of judgment. And as for all the worshippers of idols and the profane, there will be no hope for them in the land of the living, and there will be no remembrance of them on earth. For they will descend into Sheol, which is another word for Hades, and in the place of condemnation they will go, as the children of Sodom were taken away from the earth, so will all those who worship idols be taken away. So again, yes, we're talking about the Canaanites that we know now. The Canaanites who rule our world are all Luciferians, at least if you have been waking up over these past few years, you know exactly what we're talking about. And we also know that in Sodom, according to the book of Jubilee, what was happening in Sodom isn't what we were taught in Sunday school. What was happening in Sodom was incest. So this whole idea of sodomy coming from Sodom isn't actually accurate compared to the book of Jubilee. It was incest. It was fathers having inappropriate relationships with their daughters as it was spoken about in the book of Jubilee. So that's interesting, right? Fear not, my son Jacob, and be not dismayed, O son of Abraham. May the Most High God preserve thee from destruction, and from all the paths of error may he deliver thee. This house have I built for myself, that I might put my name upon it in the earth. It is given to thee and to thy seed forever, and it will be named the house of Abraham. 
It is given to thee and to thy seed forever, for thou wilt build my house and establish my name before God forever. Thy seed and thy name will stand throughout all generations of the earth. And he ceased commanding him and blessed him. And the two lay together on one bed, and Jacob slept in the bosom of, of Abraham, his father's father, and he kissed him seven times, and his affection and his heart rejoiced over him. And he blessed him with all his heart and said, The Most High God, the God of all, the Creator of all, who brought me from Ur of the Chaldees, that he might give me this land to inherit it forever, and I may establish my holy seed, blessed be the Most High forever. And he blessed Jacob and said, My son, over whom with all my heart and my affection I rejoice, may thy grace and thy mercy be lifted up upon him and upon his seed always. And do not forsake him, nor set him at naught from henceforth unto the days of eternity. And may thine eyes be open upon him and upon his seed. And thou mayest preserve him and bless him, and mayest sanctify him as a nation for thine inheritance." And bless him with all thy blessing from henceforth upon all the days of eternity, and renew thy covenant and thy grace with him and with his seed according to all thy good pleasure unto all generations of the earth. It's interesting, there is um, a lady on YouTube, I don't know if she's still on YouTube, but Melissa Red Pill, the, the, the Earth or the World is her channel name, and she did a whole breakdown of the lineage of number 45, President T., can't say the full name on YouTube because of censorship, and he is of the line of Jacob. She was able to trace his lineage through his mother all the way back to Jacob, which is super fascinating if you know the story of Revelation. So this brings us to chapter 23, the death and burial of Abraham. And he placed two fingers of Jacob on his eyes, and he blessed the God of gods, and he covered his face and stretched out his feet and slept the sleep of eternity. And was gathered to his fathers. And notwithstanding all this, Jacob was lying in his bosom and knew not that Abraham, his father's father, was dead. And Jacob woke from his sleep and beheld Abraham was cold as ice. And he said, Father, Father, but there was none that spake, and he knew that he was dead. And he arose from his bosom and ran and told Rebekah his mother. And Rebekah went to Isaac in the night and told him. And they went together, and Jacob with them, and a lamp was in his hand. And when they had gone, they found Abraham lying dead. And Isaac fell on the face of his father and wept and kissed him. And the voices were heard in the house of Abraham, and Ishmael and his son arose and went to Abraham his father and wept over Abraham his father, and he and all the house of Abraham, and they wept with great weeping. And his sons Isaac and Ishmael buried him in the double cave near Sarah his wife, and they wept for him forty days. All the men of his house, and Isaac and Ishmael, and all their sons, and all the sons of Keturah, in their places, and in the days of weeping for Abraham, were ended. So Keturah is Abraham's third wife. We talked about her last week. She is in the canonized Bible as well, with her six sons that were also Abraham's sons. And he lived three jubilees and four weeks of years and 175 years and completed the days of his life being old and full of days. And now we're going to come to verse 9 of chapter 23. And there's a little um, title here, The Decreasing Years and Increasing Corruption of Mankind. So now we're going to start to see how our life is now not, we don't live as long as they lived. Obviously, we what lived to about 80 years old, and here we're seeing people get in well, well into their 100s, close to 200. Of course, we know Noah lived to be 950 years old, so it's interesting they have a little mark here that verse 9 through 17 is going to talk about the decreasing years and increasing corruption of mankind. So here we go, verse 9. For the days of the forefathers of their lives were 19 jubilees, and after the flood they began to grow less than 19 jubilees, and to decrease in jubilees, and to grow old quickly, and to be full of their days by reason of manifold tribulation and the wickedness of their ways, with the exception of Abraham. For Abraham was perfect in all his deeds with the Lord, and well-pleasing in righteousness all the days of his life, and behold, he did not complete four jubilees in his life when he had grown old by reason of the wickedness and was full of his days. And all the generations which will arise from the time until the day of the great judgment will grow old quickly before they complete two jubilees, and their knowledge will forsake them by reason of their old age, and all their knowledge will vanish away. 
And in those days, if a man live a jubilee and a half of years, they will say regarding him, he hath lived long. And the greater part of his days are pain and sorrow and tribulation, and there is no peace. So a jubilee, that's the whole marking of time, was 49 years. So that's correct. So we live about, you know, let's let's just round that up to 50. So yeah, like 75 years, 80 years. So that's correct. That's That's about how long we live now. So verse 13, for calamity followeth on calamity, and wound on wound, and tribulation on tribulation, and evil tidings on evil tidings, and illness on illness, and all evil judgments such as these, one with another, illness and overthrow, and snow and frost and ice, and fever and chills, and torpor and famine and death, and sword and captivity, and all the things of calamities and pain. And all these will come on an evil generation, which which transgresseth on the earth, their works are uncleanliness and fornication and pollution and abominations. And they will say, the days of the forefathers were many, even unto a thousand years. That's funny, we were just talking about that. So yes, we will say that. And we're good, but behold the days of our life. If a man hath lived many years, are three score years and ten. And if he is strong, four score years and those evil. And there is no peace in the days of his evil generation. And in that generation, the sons will convict their fathers and their elders of sin and unrighteousness, and of the words of their mouth and the great wickedness which they perpetrate, and concerning their forsaking the covenant which the Lord hath made between them and him, that they should observe and do all his commandments and his ordinance and all his laws, without departing either to the right hand or to the left. For all have done evil, every mouth speaketh inequity, and all their works are the uncleanliness and the abomination, and all their ways are pollution, uncleanliness, and destruction. Behold, the earth will be destroyed on account of all their works, and there will be no seed of the vine, no oil, for their works are altogether faithless, and they will all perish together, beast and cattle and birds, and all the fish of the sea, on account of the children of men. And they will strive one with another, the young with the old, and the old with the young, the poor with the rich, and the lowly with the great, and the beggar with the prince, on account of the law and the covenant. For they have forgotten commandment and covenant, and feast and months, and sabbaths, and jubilees, and all the judgments. And they will stand with bows and swords and war to turn them back into the way, but they will not return until much blood hath been shed on the earth one by another." And those who have escaped will not return from their wickedness to the ways of righteousness, but they will all exalt themselves to deceit and wealth. And they may each take all that is his neighbor's, and they will name the great name, but not in truth and not in righteousness. And they will defile the holy of holies with their uncleanliness and their corruption of their pollution. And a great punishment will befall the deeds of this generation from the Lord, and he will give them over to the sword and to judgment and to captivity and to be plundered and devoured. And he will wake up against them the sinners of the Gentiles who have neither mercy nor compassion and who will respect the person of none, neither old nor young, nor anyone, for they are more wicked and strong and do evil than all the children of men. And they will use violence against Israel and transgressions against Jacob, and much blood will be shed upon the earth, and there will be none to gather and none to bury. And in those days they will cry aloud and call and pray that they may be saved from the hand of the sinner, the Gentiles, but none will be saved. And the head of the children will be white with gray hair, and a child of three weeks will appear old like a man of one hundred years, and their stature will be destroyed by tribulation and oppression. And in those days the children will begin to study the laws and seek the commandments and return to the path of righteousness. And the days will begin to grow many and increase amongst those children of men till their days draw nigh to one thousand years, and to a great number of years than before was the number of days. And there will be no old man, nor one who is not satisfied with his days, for all will be as children and youth. So it sounds like they're really talking about what's happening now, which I think most of us on this channel agree that we are in the book of Revelation, which if you're following along, the book of Revelation actually isn't a scary story. It's actually good news because we're not the ones that are experiencing the tribulation. It's the Canaanites who are experiencing the tribulation. So verse 29, and all their days will be complete and live in peace and enjoy. So again, a thousand years of peace that we're coming into. And there will be no Satan nor any deliverer or destroying for all their days will be days of blessing and healing. And at that time, the Lord will heal his servants and they will rise up and see a great 
peace and drive out their adversaries and the righteousness will see and be thankful and rejoice with joy forever and ever and will see all their judgments and all their curses and all their enemies and their bones will rest in the earth and their spirits will have much joy and they will know that this is the Lord who executeth judgment and showeth mercy to hundreds and thousands and to all the love of him. And do thou, Moses, write down these words, for thus are they written, and they are recorded on the heavenly tables for a testimony for the generations forever. So again, if you're just joining us and you haven't listened to the first parts of this book, this is the angels telling the story of all these people. It wasn't just Abraham, it was also Enoch and, and uh, Noah. Uh, we're just now at the place of Abraham, the genealogy of what happened in the beginning, basically. It's on Mount Sinai we, where he also collects the Ten Commandments. So this is going to bring us to chapter 24. Isaac at the well of vision. Esau sells his birthright. And it came to pass, after the death of Abraham, the Lord blessed Isaac his son, and he arose from Hebron, and went and dwelt at the well of the vision in the first year of the third week of this jubilee seven years. And in the first year of the fourth week a famine began in the land, besides the first famine, which had been in the days of Abraham. And Jacob sawed lentil porridge, and Esau came from the field hungry. And he said to Jacob his brother, Give me some of this red porridge. And Jacob said to him, Sell to me thine birthright, and I will give thee bread and also some of this lentil porridge. And Esau said in his heart, I shall die. Of what profit to me is this birthright? And he said to Jacob, I give it to thee. And Jacob said, Swear to me this day, and he sware unto him. And Jacob gave his brother Esau bread and porridge, and he ate till he was satisfied. And Esau despised his birthright. For this reason was Esau's name called Edom on account of the red porridge which Jacob gave him for his birthright. So Edom, or Esau, is the, the patriarch, I guess you could say, of the Edomites, which is super interesting. And if you guys want me to do a breakdown of the Edomites let me know in the comment section below and I will be glad to. And Jacob became the elder and Esau was brought down from his dignity. And the famine was over the land and Isaac departed to go down into Egypt in the second year of this week and went to the king of the Philistines to Gerar unto Amalek. And the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, Go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land that I shall tell thee of and journey in this land and I shall be with thee and bless thee. For to thee and to thy seed shall I give all this land, and shall I establish my oath, which I swear unto Abraham thy father, and I shall multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven, and shall give unto thy seed all this land. And in thy seed will all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thy father obeyed my voice and kept my charge, and my commandments, and my laws, and my ordinances, and my covenant." And now obey my voice and dwell in this land. And he dwelt in Gerar three weeks of years, and an Amalek charged concerning him and concerning all that was his saying, Any man that shall touch him or aught that is his shall surely die. And Isaac waxed strong among the Philistines, and he got many possessions, auction and sheep and camels and asses and a great household. So I guess a great household means many servants. And he sowed the land of the Philistines and brought in a hundredfold, and Isaac became exceedingly great, and the Philistines envied him. Now all the wells which the servants of Abraham had dug during the life of Abraham, the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham and filled them with earth. And Amalek said unto Isaac, Go from us, for thou art much mightier than we. And Isaac departed thence in this first year of the seventh week, and journeyed in the valley of Gerir. And they digged again the wells of water which the servants of Abraham his father had digged, and which the Philistines had closed after the death of Abraham his father, and he called their names as Abraham his father had named them. And the servants of Isaac dug a well in the valley and found living water, and the shepherds of Gerir strove from the shepherds of Isaac, saying, The water is ours. And Isaac called the name of the well Perversity, because they had been perverse with us. And they dug a second well, and they strove for that also, and he called it enmity. And then he arose from thence, and they digged another well. And for that they strove not, and he called the name of it room. And Isaac said, Now the Lord hath made room for us, and we have increased in the land. 
And he went up from thence to the well of the oath in the first year of the first week in the 44th Jubilee. So the well of the oath was Abraham, his grandfather's well. And the Lord appeared to him that night on the new moon of the first month and said unto him, I am the God of Abraham thy father, fear not, for I am with thee, and shall bless thee, and shall surely multiply thy seed as the seed of the earth for the sake of Abraham thy servant. And he built an altar there which Abraham his father had first built, and he called upon the name of the Lord, and he offered sacrifice to God of Abraham his father. And they digged a well, and they found living water. And the servants of Isaac digged another well and did not find water. And they went and told Isaac that they had not found water. And Isaac said, I have sworn this day to the Philistines that this thing hath been announced to us. And he called the name of the place the well of the oath. For there he had sworn to Abelech and Hazueth, his friend, and Phicol the perfect of his host. And Isaac knew that day that under constraint he had sworn to them to make peace with them. And Isaac on that day cursed the Philistines and said, Cursed be the Philistines unto the day of wrath and indignation from the midst of all nations. May God make them a derision and a curse and an object of wrath and indignation in the hands of the sinners and in the hands of Kittim. And whoever escapeth the sword of the enemy and the Kittim, may the righteous nation root out in judgment from under heaven, for they will be the enemies and the foes of my children throughout their generations upon the earth. And no remnant will be left of them, nor one that will be saved on the day of the wrath of judgment. For the destruction and rooting out and the expulsion from the earth is the whole seed of the Philistines. And there will no longer be left for these Caphtorian, a name or a seed on the earth. For though he ascended unto heaven, thence will he be brought down. And though he made himself strong on earth, thence he will be dragged forth. And though he hide himself amongst the nations, even from thence will he be rooted out. And though he descended into Saul, or Hades, there will also be his commandment be great. And there also he will have no peace. And if he go into captivity by the hands of those that seek his life, will they slay him on their way? And neither name nor seed will be left to him on all the earth. For into internal malediction will he depart. And thus it is written and engraved concerning him on the heavenly tables to do unto him on the day of judgment so that he may be rooted out of the earth. And that ends chapter 24. Next week we will pick back up with chapter 25. Thank you guys all for sitting through this. This has been a very fascinating journey going through the book of Jubilees. I said this last week and I'm going to say this again. In my deep, deep, deep dives into the history of the Christian faith and especially as we have been covering these missing books of the Bible, again there are supposed to be 777 books in the Bible, we only got about 60 of them. So there's a lot of information that's missing from our Bible. And I frankly take the missing books or the banned books, the information in these books to be more legitimate than even the canonized Bible sometimes because the canonized Bible as a fact has been altered. This is not a conspiracy theory. This is not an opinion. This is actual fact. The Bible that we have has gone through the shredder multiple times and has been changed by men to fit their own narrative and to command nations in the way that they want to command nations. This again is fact. This happened. And so with these missing books, we're seeing a lot of information that has not been altered because these books were hidden for so many years. Now with that being said as well, it has come to my attention that many denominations teach things differently. And last week on the Dark Outpost, I asked for people to let me know if they knew some of these stories because some of the stories regarding Abraham, especially his name change or the fact that his wife Sarah had been taken captive by the Pharaoh, I did not grow up with those stories as a child. Now, a lot of people were very respectful when they wrote in saying they knew the story or not knew the story. A lot of people did not know that story just like myself, but some people were downright rude when they sent their emails in and aggressive and angry. And I just want to remind people that emailing somebody hateful emails because you grew up with a biblical story that other people and other denominations did not grow up with is not acting of God. That is actually acting of the devil, of the darkness, of evil. And as I've said before, ignorance is bliss, but knowledge is power. 
we know now that different denominations are taught different stories. And so I'm going to remind everybody to judge not, lest ye be judged. As we go through these books, there might be episodes in these Bibles stories that I got growing up that maybe you didn't. And that's okay. Because we've all been manipulated. We've all been coerced by our vulnerabilities from some pretty awful people throughout history that have weaseled their way into the churches. Please remember that Jesus' two commandments were to love thy God with all thy heart and to love each other as he has loved us. Sending in hateful emails is not loving your neighbor, especially when I have done nothing evil to you. All right, with that being said, I also want to say thank you to everybody else who's been involved in this conversation and all the positive comments that we've received and the support that we've received. As Ram Das said, we are all just walking each other home. I hope that you guys are having a fabulous week, and I hope that the rest of your week gets even, even better. Thank you again to Josh McKay for doing our music, and thank you so much to Todd Roderick for helping me get this video out to you guys today. I will talk to you soon. Bye.